All right, praise the Lord. I want to welcome everybody that's joining us now uh, from television, radio, and uh, live streaming. I want to thank everyone uh, that's been watching for live streaming for inviting your friends. Our live streaming attendance is picking up. It's really growing, and I really do appreciate that. And I want to ask you again uh, to call somebody, tell them we're on the air. You're listening to us on the radio or you're watching us live streaming. Tell them what channel. Uh, that we're on, how to find us, uh, so they can uh, uh, connect with us, and hopefully we can be an encouragement and a blessing uh, to them also. I've got some things on my heart I'd like to, to uh, preach to you today, found in uh, St. Mark's Gospel. I've never seen such a time where people were in bondage to sin and in bondage to different addictions and in bondage to many different things, but I want to preach to you about a man today that can break the chains of bondage and set us free. I want to talk to you about a man today that has the power just by walking up and looking at you and being next to you can have the power to uh, release into you favor and joy and, and change the way we think uh, and change the way we feel about things. Uh, he can bring mercy and forgiveness for us and he can also cause us, uh, amen, to have mercy and uh, cause us to forgive other people, amen, that have wronged us. Uh, amen, the man I'm talking about is Jesus Christ the Son of the Most High God. And I'm thankful that everybody that comes in contact with Jesus, uh, our lives are never the same ever, ever, ever. Never anymore are we ever the same in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. And I know that there's many today, amen, they need a touch. They think they need alcohol. They think they need drugs. They think they need a psychiatrist. They might think that they need some kind of social worker, amen, to help them. They might think they need counseling, amen, through life skills. Well, what you need is a life change, amen, by Jesus Christ. Amen. He's the author and the finisher of our faith, and he has the power to make every demonic spirit uh, and every stronghold, uh, amen, shake, uh, amen, and flee at his command. Praise the Lord. Give him honor, praise, and glory. He's such a good God. Amen. All right, in Mark chapter number 5, I'm going to read to you about a man, amen, that's in just about the same predicament, amen, that a large people, a large amount of people in America is in today. And I know there's people that are watching or listening in other countries uh, other than America, and you see it there also. I know we got people that's live streaming from uh, different countries uh, also, and I know that it's like that no matter where you're at. But for us uh, that's living in America, we know, amen, it's very much around us uh, in our communities, uh, amen, the homes that are out of order, the families, uh, amen, that are discouraged, and the people, uh, amen, that are taking antidepressants, uh, and the people that are taking anxiety medicine, uh, amen, because of the way things are today. We need a refreshing, uh, amen, to come from heaven. Uh, we need a revival, amen, for the church, uh, amen, and we need to be broke loose, uh, amen, from those things, uh, amen, that are holding us down, uh, amen, so we can be able to dance in the rain uh, and shout victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I feel the preacher coming. Amen. In Mark chapter number 5, uh, verse number 1, and they came over into the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him a uh, out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit uh, who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not with chains because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plucked asunder by him and the fetters broke in pieces neither could any man tame him and always night and day he was in the mountains in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones but when he saw Jesus afar off he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, 
thou unclean spirit. And he said unto him, What is thy name? He answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter uh, into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. There were about 2,000 and were choked in the sea. And they that fled the swine, fed the swine, fled and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And when they come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed uh, in his right mind, they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. I'm going to stop right there. Isn't it amazing? How that when there's a remedy, amen, for what we have need of, the majority of the people is afraid of it. Boy, won't that preach. Amen. A lot of folks in America today is scared to death of the church. They want to snuff us out. They want to shut us up. They want us to be quiet. They want to pass laws, amen, to hold us down. Amen, because they don't want us turning the country upside down through hearing the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. They like darkness. They like for it to be quiet. Well, Brother Jimmy, where'd you get that way of thinking? I got it from Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, uh, because men love darkness rather than light. Amen. They hide in that darkness because their deeds are evil, right? Amen. All right, Ephesians 4, verse number 1. I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, this is Apostle Paul, I beseech you uh, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one Spirit, even as ye are called, and one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us uh, is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto our perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine uh, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in him in all things which is the head, even Christ, from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. Let's pray. Father, in the living name of Jesus, we come before you once again this day. Thanking you, Lord, for the joy of your salvation. Asking you, Lord, to hide us again behind the shadow of the cross that no glory will come to me in the flesh, but the name of Jesus might be praised, uplifted, and glorified for now and forevermore. Father, I pray, Lord, you would minister to the broken hearts today, those that are uh, caught up in addictions and those that are under bondage.
bondage of sin and those, Lord, uh, that have been blinded by the God of this world. Uh, I pray, Father, that you would give them a desire, Lord, to come out of that rut that they're living in, to come out of that hole that the enemy, that pit, that the enemy has pushed them into. I pray, Father, that, Lord, you would cause them to have a desire, Lord, uh, uh, Father, to run to you, uh, Father, with faith and believing, Lord, that you're going to lift them up and bring them out of the pit. Father, I ask you, Lord, to touch and bless and to move in a mighty and a powerful way. Thanking you, Lord, for the joy of your salvation. Asking you now to release, Lord, into this place favor and the anointing of God. For we, without the anointing, we know it would be impossible, Lord, for us to preach. In Jesus' precious, holy, and loving name, we humbly pray and ask all these things this day. Amen. Looking back into the Word of God, there's some things I want to point out about this man uh, here who was called Legion. This man was living in the tombs, a man that was wild. They had bound him with chains. They had bound him with fetters. And many times uh, he had broken the chains. Uh, he had broken the fetters because he was so miserable, because he was so angry, because he was so frustrated, uh, amen, that if there was no happiness uh, and he was like a wild man uh, and he slip in the tombs. Amen. You know why he slipped in the tombs? Amen. Because that's the only place he felt like he could hide from society and not be an embarrassment. He knew that he was wild, out of control. He knew that there was people that had came to him and offered help. Amen. They, he no doubt had heard people talking about him and he was ashamed. I'm going to preach to those today that has addictions that are bound. Amen. To sin, you're bound to things. Amen, that you know that's not right. Uh, you know that you're under bondage. Uh, you know that you're not happy. Uh, and sometimes you're miserable in this. Uh, amen, will even stick out to where others, uh, amen, can see how miserable that you are because things is not right uh, between you and the Lord. Uh, amen, here was a, a time where Jesus came walking up. Uh, and notice here in the Word of God, the Bible says, uh, amen, that he ran to Jesus uh, and began to worship him. Uh, and then he began to cry out, uh, with a loud voice. Well, Brother Jimmy, why would he be doing uh, those things? Uh, amen. The first of all, you saw the man come running to Jesus because of the compassion uh, that Jesus had for people, uh, amen, that are broken, the misfits, uh, amen, those uh, who have their lives messed up. Uh, he's always had compassion uh, to go to them people, Brother Roger Brown, uh, amen, and to listen to them and to touch them and to give them what they had need of and to release them and make them free. Amen. Here was the man. He come running to Jesus. Uh, and when the man got to running to Jesus, uh, all it was that spirit uh, or spirits that were inside of him uh, cried out with a loud voice uh, and asked him not to torment them uh, before their time. Uh, amen. Why? Because the spirits, uh, the ungodly spirits are subject unto God. Uh, amen. The man knew that he had a need uh, and he ran to the Lord. Uh, and uh, there was a herd of swine uh, that were feeding nearby. Notice the Word of God said there was about 2,000 of them. Amen. There's something I want to bring out and I want to remind everybody. Amen. The word legion means uh, a group of about 2,000 people. Uh, amen. There was 2,000 spirits uh, inside this man. No wonder the man was nuts. Uh, no wonder the man was raving uh, and wild uh, and living in the tombs, ashamed uh, of what life had done for him and ashamed of how he acts. Uh, I've, told, I've talked to a lot of people, amen, that are ashamed of what? Uh, drug addiction would do to them. And they're ashamed of what alcoholism, uh, amen, does to them, how it makes them act, uh, amen, how that it causes people, uh, amen, to be pushed away. I've seen people that's had spirits inside of them, amen. They know that they're miserable. They know that they're mad, uh, amen. They don't know why they're mad. They're just mad. How many have seen the uprisings, uh, amen, in these cities lately? Every time a police officer gets shot, uh, I'm going to stop right here for just a minute. Uh, I want to say this. I know that there are some bad police police officers out there. I know that sometimes uh, there is some injustices, uh, amen, that is done, uh, amen. But listen, folks, when you go in the streets, uh, amen, before you even find out, uh, amen, what happened uh, and whose fault it was, uh, and go to burning buildings uh, and uh, tearing up things uh, and traveling from one city to another, it's because you've got some spirits inside of you and they're not wanting to go worship Jesus. 
Amen. They're wanting to tear up because they're angry and they're miserable. Amen. They don't know why they're angry. They just know inside. I've got so much rage inside of me. I just don't like anybody. And don't you look at me the wrong way or I'll knock your head off. Amen. they got a chip on their shoulder and they go to looking for trouble. They go to looking for somebody to pick a fight with. Amen. They go to looking for somebody. Amen. So they can give them a cussing. They think if they can go cuss somebody, amen, and treat them real bad, it, it kind of relieves the pressure. Amen. For just a moment, they go to thinking about how sorry that person is, amen, that they're going to attack rather than realizing how sorry that the, that the life that they're living is and how sorry they are for the way they live and what they're doing. Amen. That to be miserable, amen, is a very unhappy life. I can tell you that right now. God wants us to find favor through him and to be happy. Now, the world today has got every kind of remedy that can be thought of. Uh, amen. They've tried drugs. They've tried everything. Amen. Did you know that sometimes, uh, amen, the psychiatrists, when they can't talk and reason with you, the only thing they can do is give you enough medicine to make you loopy that you're just so happy to be alive uh, and you don't know what's going on. And I say, would you turn the TV on? And they say, well, it's already on. Would you turn it over to Bugs Bunny? You're watching Bugs Bunny. Oh, I didn't know who I was watching. I thought I was watching Jimmy Wilson for each way he's jumping around. I didn't know what I was watching. I just know that I'm happy. Why are you happy? I don't know, but I'm happy. Amen. That's all the psychiatrist can do. Amen. To put you on a loopy medicine. Amen. To make you think that you feel good. Amen. They don't talk about the side effects. How many of you ever watched the television, seen all these side effects with these pills? Amen. It makes you want to run from every drugstore there is in the country. Amen. When you hear of uh, you got this, you got that, you think, man, I've got some of them symptoms right there. We've got a medication right now that can help you. You think, man. I need to write this down. But on the other hand, it can cause brain aneurysms and heart attacks. It can cause lung cancer. It can cause liver cancer. It can cause you to become suicidal. So if you're depressed, take a pill that could cause you to be suicidal. That's just like saying, I'm on fire. Somebody quick get some gasoline. It's got to help. No, it don't help. Amen. And the medication, amen, to warp your brain and mess up your liver is not going to help you. I know that we got to go to the doctor, and I'm not telling you to throw your medication away, but I'm telling you, if you've got some of these disorders, as they call them, you need to run to Jesus. You need to try God and allow him, amen, to have the opportunity, amen, to come into your life, amen, and to change some things. Here there was this 2,000 swine that was feeding nearby, and they said, please, don't run us out of the country. And Jesus saw them swine. Amen. To the Jews, the swine was a dirty animal. And he said, just go into them dirty swine over there. And then he calls them swine. They couldn't carry the pressure. So they went down into the sea and they drowned themselves. Amen. But listen, look what happened to the man. Oh, but he was set free. Amen. That man that lived naked in the tombs. That man that cut himself. Amen. They all began to get scared because they heard of the news of what Jesus did. Amen. And so they wanted to go see what had happened. When they got there, they found Legion uh, sitting there clothed uh, in his right mind. Uh, amen. Instead of saying, like that, he was probably singing, I've got victory over the enemy, and this world can do me no harm. Or he might have been singing uh, Victory in Jesus. He might have been singing Amazing Grace. I know those songs weren't written at that particular time, but you don't know what he was singing. Uh, I know one thing. Uh, amen. According to the scripture, he was a happy man. Uh, amen. Because Jesus uh, had changed their life. If you could convince, uh, amen, America today, uh, amen, that God is what they need uh, and could get a revival to break out across the land, uh, we'd see some things change. Uh, there wouldn't be so much uh, hatred. There wouldn't be so much anger. Did you know today you don't take anything to set somebody off. Amen. You just disagree with them in the least. Amen. You just fix something. I mean, if you forget to put a piece of lettuce on a hamburger, people think they died. I got no lettuce on my hamburger. <laughs> Woo. I won't ever come back here no more. You didn't give me no lettuce. Calm down. I got some. Just a minute. Hey, man, but they're just walking around like... <sighs> I'm going to release on somebody. They just better be glad that the electric company I need to go off on them. I'm going to the barbecue hut and get something to eat. 
Hey, man, that's the way that some people are. They go to McDonald's or they go somewhere. Hey, man, give them something to eat. They're all wound up. You can tell by their eyes. When one eye goes up and the other one down, you know you got trouble. Hey, man, you know there's something inside of them that you ain't going to want to release. Hey, man, you just try to make them happy. Get them out of there. Hey, man, as soon as you can. Hey, man, people today are all wound up. Hey, man, they're wound up tighter than an eight-day clock. Hey, man, they got them clocks you used to wind them up, and they go eight days, tick-tock, 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 tick-tock. You didn't have to worry about them. Just wind them up every Monday, hey, man, or every Sunday. Uh, Dad used to uh, wind his up every Sunday afternoon after church. Hey, man, he'd take just a couple of minutes and wind up that clock. Hey, man, he'd wind up this side, and he'd take that key out and put it on the other side, and he'd wind up that side of the clock, put that key in there and shut the door and pull the little latch over it. He thought, I'm good for a week now. Amen. See, those people today are wound up, amen, like an eight-day clock. Amen, they're a, they're a bundle of nerves, amen, getting ready to go off on somebody because, amen, they're under stress. They're in a hurry. I've got to be over here. I've got to get that done. This is not right, and I'm waiting on that one over there, and they, this one over here is lied to me. Man, they're so miserable. Amen, but I want you to notice here, amen, in the Word of God, amen, how that this man by the name of Legion, amen, he had heard about Jesus. No doubt he felt, amen, the love of God. God, amen, when he was yet a great way off. And the Bible says that he ran to Jesus, and immediately those spirits began to cry out for mercy. What are you saying, Brother Jimmy? I'm saying if you're wound up like an eight-day clock, amen, I'm saying if you're full of stress and full of anger today, you need to come run into Jesus. Well, Brother Jimmy, I just get the feeling like I want to go to church, and then something keeps coming up. It's going to keep coming up as long as you let it keep coming up. When the devil's got a stronghold, amen, there ain't no doubt he wants to keep you that way. Amen, he don't like to release any prisoners. Amen, he wants to hold you. Amen, to be prisoner. What happened? The man, amen, had to go to Jesus. Amen, the fleshly man had to come running to the Lord. And the Bible says when he come running to the Lord, he worshiped him. Amen, so when he came and he worshiped him, amen, that put the power, amen, up against the enemy and the enemy had to beg, amen, for release and beg for mercy, not to be tormented, amen, above, before their time, amen, and not to be ran out of the country, amen. They wanted to stay into the country. Jesus got them completely out of that man and released them into the hogs. Now, Jesus could have cast them into hell, but he knew, amen, that it was before their time. There's going to be a day coming when every evil spirit shall be bound and thrown into the lake of fire with Satan and with all of those who take the mark of the beast and all of those that does the ungodly things shall be thrown into the lake of fire forever. But that was 2,000 years or so, amen, before that day. It wasn't time right then, amen, to be thrown into hell. So Jesus did the next best thing. He put them into the dirtiest animal, amen, that the Jewish people could think of and then he made them run down a steep place and go into the sea and drown themselves. He didn't run them out of the country. He just sent them down the bluff and drowned them. Amen, but he got rid of them. Amen, uh, you, uh, Brother Jimmy, is those spirits still on the earth today? Well, of course they're still on the earth today. I've seen politicians with them in them. Amen. I've seen uh, some preachers that had some in them. I said they were preachers. Amen, I've seen a lot of people, uh, amen, that said they had the Lord, uh, had some spirits inside of them, uh, amen, they needed to be released from. Uh, amen, oh, Brother Jimmy, I, I, listen, let me tell you something. If you've got something inside of you, it's not supposed to be inside of you. That thing that's inside of you is going to beckon you, beg you, uh, amen, try to get you not to go to Jesus uh, because he knows uh, whether you believe it or not, he knows that when you come in contact with Jesus, uh, he's going to have to flee, and he's got to beg for mercy. If we could just get this uh, and we could just realize, uh, amen, that just even one little demonic spirit, uh, amen, is scared of the Lord, but here was 2,000 of them, and only one Jesus, and they beg for mercy. Are you getting the odds there? Hey, man, would you be afraid of one person? Well, maybe you would, maybe you wouldn't. What if you had 2,000 two uh, come running up the driveway to your house this evening with a club in their hand? And you come out and said, be gone to the next street. And they said, please have mercy, don't kill us. Don't send us to hell. All 2,000 of us are scared of you. Are you getting it now? 
Amen. That's the way it was with these demonic spirits. That's the way it was, the way it is with these strongholds. If we can have faith and we can believe, every one of us, amen, wants to patronize ourselves, pat ourselves on the back, and make excuses for ourselves. I was playing Donkey Kong with my granddaughter. Some of you don't know what Donkey Kong is. That was Nintendo. That might have been before some of you was born. But I was sitting there. I was sitting there. It was made back in the 90s, 1994, I think. But anyway, uh, I was sitting there, and in fact, her daddy was just a little bitty feller uh, back then, back in 94. But, but anyway, what I'm trying to say is uh, I was playing Donkey Kong with the grandbaby, granddaughter. She's seven years old. And uh, my, my little uh, uh, gorilla walked, and I pushed the wrong button. He just went and jumped off the cliff. He was depressed. I said, I pushed the wrong button. She said, Pa, you're just making excuses because you're losing. I said, you got, you got that right. I was blaming the button I was pushing. Boy, won't that preach. There's a whole lot of people today that's blaming somebody for pushing their button, amen, when it's a spirit inside of them. Amen, there's people today that's blaming somebody, amen, for what they're doing or what they're going through, amen, because it has to be somebody else's fault because we're the victim, amen. We're not the victim, amen. If we got spirits inside of us, it needs to be released at an altar of prayer. Man cannot do it. Denomination cannot do it. A church attendance, amen, by itself cannot get you released from those things. Amen, it takes prayer and it takes worship. Amen. I can just imagine this man come running up to Jesus and he said he began to worship him. Now it don't say what he said. It don't say if he sung. It just said he began to worship him. What do we do when we come and worship the Lord? We acknowledge him as being God of gods, King of kings, Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, the everlasting Father. Amen. The mighty counselor. Amen. We worship him for being our savior, our deliverer, our constant help. Amen. And in, in, in time of trouble, amen, he's there for us when we call on him. We worship him. Amen. For sending his son to bleed and die on the cross. We worship him for being holy. Amen. And righteous. Amen. And being a good God and a righteous God. We worship him. Amen. For not, amen, having anger against us, but for having mercy and grace. Amen. So we can find deliverance verse in a time of need. Amen. So we, we come together and we sing songs unto the Lord. We go and we pray together. Either kneel or we stand and pray. Whatever church that you might be going to and we worship the Lord. I can just see this man, Legion, all this stuff going on in his head. Get away from him. No, no, no. Don't you go up there. And he's thinking, yeah, I got to get to him. When I get up there to where he's at, he's going to whoop every one of you. If I can just get up there to where Jesus is, uh, all of the things that's coming against me, uh, I'm going to be thinking right. Uh, I'm not going to have to hide from the neighbors anymore. I'm not going to have to be ashamed of how I've acted and what I've done. Uh, if I could just make it to him, uh, he's going to put the hurt on every one of y'all. You're bigger than I am. There's too many of you. But I know a man that can. Uh, and he just walked up over here. Uh, right here in the city of the Gadarenes, uh, I'm a running to him. Uh, and when he got to him, no doubt he said, oh, Oh, Master, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords and King of Kings, I worship, I acknowledge you as being the Messiah. Help me, Lord. Amen. Listen, and the next thing that happened, uh, amen, those spirits inside of him began to scream out, uh, amen, for mercy. Listen, if we could just realize, uh, amen, that God loves you, uh, he's not going to throw you away. Uh, amen, he didn't go up to uh, Legion. When Legion came up to him, he didn't say, well, you've been unclothed and acted like some kind of wild idiot. Uh, get back over wearing the tombs and shut up. Oh, no. He, he knew exactly what was wrong with you. Uh, in other words, he knew you're a good man. You've got good qualities. There's a lot of good inside of you. I just need to get that stuff out of your head, out of your heart, out of your spirit that's controlling you so you can be set free. Then the good qualities that I put in you at birth, amen, can, uh, can surface then, uh, and you can be a blessing to other people. Amen. We'd be surprised how many people are held back today. They've never reached their full potential, amen, because they got a ball and a chain, amen, on their leg. they got spirits inside of them. they got pressure inside of them that people does not realize the pressures that they have, amen, that's on them. If you notice that every president that I can think of that went in the office, they went in with either brown or black hair and they come out white-headed as a billy goat. Amen, look at President Obama. 
Go back and look at the pictures eight years ago. And then look at them today. Looks like he's aged 40 years in eight years. Amen. Pressure and stress. Amen. We'll put it on you. I can tell you that right now. Amen. I know as you get under pressure and stress, even when you're a Christian. And I saw this thing the other day, uh, yesterday on Facebook about praying for the pastors. That 97% of all the pastors uh, gets hurt by their parishioners. And it went on down through all of the things that come against the pastor and how he was saying, pray for the pastors. Uh, well, Brother Jimmy, you got some gray hair. Yeah, but the age I am, I ought to have some. Now, listen, I'm going to lay all jokes aside for just a minute. There's some people that are the same age as me and Brother Roger back here. Uh, we're Christians, and we don't look near as old as some people that's the same age as I am. I saw this guy here a couple of years ago, and I thought, who is that 85 or 90-year-old man? He's about had it. And this is the honest truth. When I finally recognized him or, or he told me who he was, I said, well, I never would have thought it. I ain't seen you in years. He's about three years younger than me, and he'll pass for 85. That's the truth. See, folks, I'm going to tell you something about sin. Amen. Sin does something to your body. Amen. But being uh, full of the Holy Ghost, uh, amen, you can have the pressure and God will carry you, amen, through the hard times. Uh, amen. He will hold you up. Uh, amen. He'll make you look younger. Amen. Some of y'all wanting to see what kind of cream you can get to make you look younger. What you need is Jesus. Uh, amen. Make you look younger. Amen. When you come to church like this. Hey man, you can get full of the Holy Ghost and leave like this. Hey man, that's the difference. Hey man, it is in our lives. Hey man, when we find Jesus, hey man, and find out, hey man, there's a help. Hey man, that will help me carry the load. Hey man, it's not because the load is too heavy. It's because you're trying to carry it by yourself. It's not because the burden is too big for you. It's because you're not allowing God to help you with that burden. Amen. Jesus take, said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. What you got to remember is, uh, amen, in a yoke of oxen, uh, amen, you put an old uh, oxen with a young oxen, uh, and the old oxen, uh, amen, is stronger. He's older, but he's stronger. And when the young one wears out, he pulls him carries him on to the end of the day. And when the young one is uh, all fired up and decided, let's go, let's go, let's run, let's run, let's run, the old ox says, hold here, boy. You'll be wanting some of that energy about dinner time. Slow down. Hold her back here. Amen. And when it gets too much for the young ox, uh, the old one says, I've been carrying this for years. It'll be all right. And if you can't carry it, I'll just carry it for you. We're going to make it to the end of the day because I'm your helper. Jesus said, take your yoke uh, upon me. Take my yoke upon you, rather. I'll get it right in a minute. And learn of me. Uh, uh, begin to understand. Uh, amen. When it's too heavy, I'll drag you along. And everybody else will think you're walking by yourself. <laughs> Everybody else will think uh, that you're strong uh, and you're vibrant uh, and you're full of energy. We won't tell anybody that I drug you for the last two hours. And we won't tell anybody that I carried you and I pulled you back. Uh, amen. I can remember when I was a little boy, my granddad, he was already up in his 70s. And uh, we've started up a hill there in Allen County, which is almost all of Allen County's hills. It's uphill both ways. <laughs> Amen. That's where I was born and raised. It's like it here in Barron County, too. But this is just Kentucky for you. But anyway, we'll be walking up the hills and going through them rocks and up and down them set rocks and all that. And he'd get to a stomp and he said, Here, Jimmy, whew, I got to sit down and rest a minute. So he'd sit down. And I said, Why? He said, Because I'm older than you. I said, Well, what's that got to do with anything? I'm, I'm full of energy. I feel good. Yeah, I was young. Yeah. And then about dinner time, I was wanting to take a nap. He said, you going to go with me? Oh, Pa, I'm tired. Oh, why are you tired? See, he had to stop and rest every now and then. He paced himself. I was full of energy, and I run my whole day's energy out in three hours. Amen. Thank God. Amen. He'll put that yoke on us and hold us back. Amen. That's why we don't need to get too much too quick. And get ahead of ourselves. Sometimes we don't need to jump, amen, and get ahead of ourselves because there's somebody that we need to help. Sometimes it can be a trap, amen, that the devil set up for us. That's why we need to get in the yoke with Jesus. That's why we need to learn, amen, that he's the one that guides us, protects us, and when he has to, he carries his load and our load also. Praise God, amen, through the responsibility. Amen, if you want to look young, amen, give your heart to Jesus. If you want 
want to look like you got more energy, uh, amen, then uh, give your heart to the Lord. Uh, amen. For the age I am, I can probably outrun some 40-year-olds. Uh, amen. Especially when the anointing comes. Uh, amen. You can do all things uh, through Christ that strengthens me. Amen. The Lord will help you. Amen. If you'll give him, amen, your burdens. But see, trying to carry that on our own. We're not going to make it. I'm going to go back into Ephesians now. Uh, chapter number uh, 4, verse number 8, it says, Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Praise the Lord. All captivity he led captive. Now, what does that say? Anything that puts you into bondage uh, that's displeasing to God, uh, he's put that into captivity. Amen. He's took the captivity captive. Uh, he's controlled all of those things. What are you trying to say? He's bigger than your cigarettes. He's bigger than your pills. He's bigger than your uh, whatever drugs. Uh, amen. He's bigger than uh, your, your sex, lustful sex addiction. Amen. He's bigger than all those things. And I know there's a lot of people today don't want to put out uh, privately everything that you've got that's a failure or everything that comes against you. You better not. You can tell it to Jesus, but you better leave everybody else alone. Don't let them know it. <laughs> amen? Because there's some things, uh, amen, would be embarrassing, and they would never forgive you. But Jesus is full of grace and full of mercy. Amen? Man will not forgive you. Why, you do one thing wrong, and they'll hate you for five years. Amen? You, you just tell one thing incorrectly. Amen? They won't ever let you forget it. I got a sister that still reminds me today, 40-something years later, I tore up her doll buggy when we were kids. And she'll tell that story every now and then. I said, well, I'm sorry. What am I going to do about it? I, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I shouldn't have tore up your doll buggy. It wasn't mine. I didn't need to be playing with a doll buggy in the first place. <laughs> I was a boy and still am. Amen, and I've never been confused. I know what bathroom to use. <sighs> I better leave that alone, amen. We better move on, amen. But what I'm trying to say is uh, I tore up her doll buggy, amen. I think she says that she's forgave me, and she'll just laugh about it. I say, yeah, but she's still reminding me. Every family get together for 40 years, she'll remind me of that blessed dog. I thought about buying her one for Christmas one year. <laughs> Go back, and I'm just doing it out of a joke, and I, and I may do that too, just a teaser. Now, we get along good. We don't have any problems. <laughs> but, <laughs> but what I'm saying is the devil today will constantly keep reminding people uh, of your mistake. You better not tell them, uh, amen, your weakness because it will be all over the church, uh, all over the community, all over everywhere, amen, in just a little bit. You better tell that to Jesus, uh, amen, and leave the rest of it alone, uh, amen. If you don't, you're going to wind up in trouble. The devil today, amen, is out to steal and to kill and to destroy. Amen, he's out to keep us from getting, uh, amen, the release that we need, uh, amen, from the things, uh, amen, that's making us feel like we're all messed up. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but there's somebody that feels like it's you're unworthy and you're messed up. If you messed up, it was a devil that messed you up. God didn't. And it's the Lord can bring you out. He can set you free. Now, there's no doubt this man whose name was Legion was not born going, wow, 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 He had to pick up them spirits somewhere. Where did he pick them spirits up? One thing, you can pick them up from other people. Amen. The attitudes that other people has. You can pick them up from TV programs. You can pick them up off the Internet. There's everything can be thought of, amen, on the Internet. And we are faced with some type of temptation, amen, every day. Amen. The devil is trying somehow or another, amen, to test you, amen, trying to find a way, amen, to cause you to fail God so he can run right straight to the throne and say, look at there what they done. Amen. And if he can ever entrap you to get you into a place, uh, amen, where you're pushed into a trap, uh, amen, to where you're going to have to offend some people, uh, amen, to get out of that, that's all that he's good for. And sometimes he'll take religious people, uh, amen, and put you in a predicament, uh, amen, so that you're going to have to take a stand. Uh, then they'll turn around and blame you because they say you took the wrong stand. 
That's the way the people are. That's the way that the devil is. Amen. And they'll never forgive you. Some won't. Some will, but some won't. Amen. But see, I'm so thankful we got a loving and forgiving God. Amen. He's full of mercy. He's full of grace. Amen. He's long-suffering. He's understanding. Amen. He is good to everyone that will call upon him, to everyone that will believe and put their trust in him, for everyone that will come and worship and give God praise and honor. Amen. God will see you through every situation. Amen. We've got to put our faith and our trust in God. We've got to release our heart unto God and ask the Lord, amen, to come into our heart. And Jesus already knows exactly what it is that you have need of and he knows what to do. Now what do you think about them 2,000 hogs just happen to be feeding nearby? I don't think it's a coincidence. Amen. I don't think it was a coincidence when Jesus told them uh, to go out to the lake and, 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 and the fish that they found with a coin in his mouth to go and to pay Caesar what's owed him. Amen. I don't think that they just happened to be a fish. I think there was somebody dropped a coin off their, out of their pocket maybe six months or a year beforehand or however long it was or five years beforehand. And the Lord sent them right there after that coin and had that thing to swallow it and just happened to have it. No, it just didn't happen to have. The Holy Spirit led that fish to be right there at the exact same time so they could catch that fish that had the coin in its mouth so that they can do what, so that Jesus would get honor out of it because he's in control of everything. I believe that Jesus knew there was going to be a legion when every one of them little pigs was still sucking their mama. Boy, that's a country boy term, ain't it? See, if I was from the city, I'd have said nursing. But you country folks wouldn't know what I was talking about. You don't say the pigs is nursing the, the hog. You say she, they're, they're sucking. Amen? That's a country term. Some people get offended when you say that. That's just country talk. Country people understands what you're saying. Amen, when you say that. And you know what? I wasn't a runt. Oh, can I preach on runts for a while? Every litter of pigs would have a run in it. All the rest of them would get to the spouts and get something to eat. And that little pig, he'd get knocked back. Here come Fred. Get out of the way. Here comes Susie. Get out of the way. I'm going to go up here. This is my spout. No, it ain't. I've seen them climb up on top of each other. Amen. Take their nose and wiggle it in. Amen. So they could push and push and kick that other one out of the way. And then they get a hold of the spigot. Amen. But the run, he was so little that all the others just kept pushing them away. Boy, that'll preach. I've had some, uh, amen, that you had to take to the house and put them on a bottle if you want them to live because somebody just kept knocking them out of the way. But I want you to know, uh, amen, that the runts are the ones that Jesus is after today, amen, so that you can get the nutrients uh, and the help that you need because somebody has been knocking you back out of the way. But God knows what you need. Uh, amen. Listen, Jesus knew these hogs needed to be there because there's a man by the name of Legion has had just about all he can take. He's right at the place of his head blowing up, amen, and being suicidal, and I've got to get off the ship right here in the city of the gatherings because old Legion is on his way out of the tombs, <laughs> and he's calling them hogs through the spirit. Come on. Come on over here. Come on over here. I need you. And here come them hogs are running stopped right up there about the time probably the old legion come up there and went to worshiping Jesus and them spirits began to beg for mercy and Jesus said go into the hogs and when he went into the hogs and the spirits said come into the sea amen and the spirit of God drove them into the sea uh, brother Jimmy you into this supernatural stuff I, of course I am he man, those that worship God must worship him in spirit and truth, for he is a spirit, so Jesus said. He man, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me, Paul said. He man, even if you're a rot, he man, God's got a spigot for you. He man, outside the litter, but won't that preach? He man. Amen. You can do anything if you put your faith and your trust in God. I know that we're only limited because of our lack of faith. Amen. We're only limited. Amen. Because that we fail to believe. Amen. The Lord said you can ask anything in my name and my Father will do it. What does that mean? It means you can ask anything in his name and his Father will do it. Well, Brother Jimmy, I asked for this and I didn't get it. 
Maybe you didn't believe. How many hopeful prayers have we had? A hopeful prayer more than likely won't be answered. It's a prayer knowing that I just got to tell the Lord what I need and because he loves me and because I'm nothing and because he knows how weak I am and because he knows that I believe and because I know that I know that I know where my help comes from, amen, I'm going to call upon him and then when you believe, then God's going to come through for you, amen. The devil sends something every week to hinder me from coming to church, every week. Amen, I have to rebuke it and pray against it. Every week the devil hinders me with some kind of hindrance or there's some kind of a, a, a something where he tries to get in my head and to fight against me. He tries to restrain me and hold me back. He tries to keep me from doing God's will and tell me how that I'm not very good and I'm the sorriest preacher there is in the area and all this kind of stuff. I had to shake my head and I had to say, shut up. I don't want to hear that stuff. I can do all things through Christ. And if I'll do the best I can do tomorrow morning, ain't nobody going to outdo me. If I'll just let God, amen, come on the scene, amen, allow him to lead me, everything's going to be all right because he'll have the right person that's going to be watching or listening or going to be in the congregation and there's going to be the right thing, amen, that's going to confront, amen, the spirit that's attacking you. It's going to confront the thing, amen, that's trying to bring you down, amen, because you're not here by accident you didn't turn on the television amen by accident you didn't flip on the radio amen because you just happened to be there amen there's a divine power amen that has authority in this universe amen and God is in charge of everything amen he allows you to watch that TV program listen to that radio he allows you to get ready and come to the shepherd's house this morning why because he knowed amen that your name might not be legion but you got the same thing after you that legion had after him but Jesus is our deliverer, and he came to lead, amen, the captive into captivity. Praise the Lord. The devil is in captivity now, amen, to lead the captivity captive, amen, and set us free and, uh, and release unto gifts unto men. What kind of gift? The gift of the Holy Ghost the gift of discernment. He gives us a gift of the sermon so we can discern where to buy that or where to purchase this or where to, where to get this or where to do that or where not to do that, where to go or where to stay. I could tell you more than one time, amen, I had an opportunity to pastor somewhere else, and I, I wanted to leave. I'll just tell you a couple of times. I don't want to leave right now, but I did a few years ago a couple of times, amen. I wanted to leave really bad. One time, I done measured the mileage from that church to my house and the mileage from this church to my house, and it wasn't over like a mile's difference, and the love offering was that I would have got at that church would have been big. They had offered me a parsonage to live in. And the pastor told me, he said, Brother Jimmy, these people here, they love you. He said, I'm fixing to retire. I'm fixing to leave. And they want you to be pastor. And I said, ooh. Oh, it sounded good, Brother Roger. Oh, man. I done drove the miles, got it on the speedometer, you know, and wrote it all down. You know, how timed it, how long, and everything from my house and when I lived there in Allen County. And, boy, everything just worked out good. And I said, look at here. This is what I've been looking for. Oh, they had the best piano player, the best worship leader you ever seen in your life. Had a good congregation. Man, it all looked good, had good roads. I couldn't find anything wrong. I tried. You don't know how hard I tried to find something wrong. Couldn't find nothing wrong. I said, whoo I'm ready to go. I told the family, I said, I've got to pray about it now, but I'm pretty sure the Lord's going to lead me down there. I prayed over it, and the Lord said, you stay right where you're at. <laughs> but see, today, instead of preaching to 200 or 250 people, I'm preaching to thousands and thousands and thousands today. Amen, that I wouldn't have been preaching to then. See, God will tell you to do the right thing. It may not look like it's the best for your wallet. It may not look like it's the best, amen, for what you know for your family right at a particular time. But see, if we'll walk in faith and not my sight, Nathan, trust God, listen to him, amen. And when the Lord tells you, be sensitive to the Holy Ghost, amen. And when the Lord tells you to do something, you make sure it's God and then you do it. Don't question it. Don't look back, amen. Don't look behind you, but just 
just know that I'm going to find favor in God. Amen. And the Lord's going to come through for you. This man, Legion, come running to Jesus because he knew his life was out of hand. He knew his life was out of control. He knew that the enemy was messing with his head, trying to get him. Amen. Confused about where you're supposed to be and what you're supposed to be doing and where you're here at the right time or whether or not this is the right thing for you or not. And the devil coming and sitting on your ear and saying, oh, Put your faith in God, did you? <laughs> we'll see what that God does. Look at what the future looks like. Looks like you're fixing to fall. Now, where's your God at? I'm going to tell you this. You just hold on. You might not see him, but, honey, he's on the way. Amen. He may be four days late, but he'll be right on time. Amen. You may think, amen, that the Lord's forsaked you. You may think that he's not hearing your prayers. Amen. But let's let me tell you something today. It doesn't matter how small or how big you are. Jesus loves you. It don't matter where you got money in your pocket or you don't have nothing but a fistful of bills. Amen. God loves you. Amen. He'll take care of you. If you keep your faith and your trust in him, the devil sometimes, amen, will try to go back and tell you that God's not going to hear your prayer because you made a mistake or you've done something that's wrong. Thank God for repentance, amen, that we can cry out to the Lord and confess our mistakes unto him or our sins if you sin to him. He is very just to forgive, the Bible says. Amen, full of mercy, full of love, full of grace, full of understanding, long-suffering. See, your prayers are not going to be hindered because that you made mistakes. Your prayers is going to be hindered because you failed to believe. What the Lord has taught us in the Word, basically, above everything else, is to just simply believe. Just believe. Now, you could say you believe. You could tell yourself that you believe. That don't mean you believe. But when you know that you know that I'm in a fix, and my God has always brought me through this every time before. I've stayed stable in church. I've faithfully paid my tithes. I've done the very best I can to serve him. Devil, don't you come in here with that lying negative junk. I want you to know that my God is getting about ready to deliver me, and I've prayed and I've asked him to come through. Now I'm just going to sit and watch, and you can hide and watch too if you want to. Because God is on his way. And when you know it in your heart, when you are convinced in your heart, uh, amen, that God's moving, amen, in your favor, in your direction, amen, to help you through your challenge, through your test, uh, through your hardship, through your time, uh, amen, of trouble that you're going through, amen, God's going to release favor because uh, he blesses faith. He don't bless doubt. You'll never shout when you've had doubt. But if you've had faith, you might get to dance a little. Amen. Might get to dance a whole lot. Might get to run the aisles and shout because of what God's did for you. I know what God can do. Amen. I've been in this thing for over 34 years now, and I'm going to tell you, there's two things that God cannot do. He cannot lie and he cannot fail. Anything else is nothing above what God can do, above his head. Amen. Everything's under his feet. He has power and authority. And whatever comes up in life, when it's too big for me, I turn it over to my best friend sitting at the right hand of the Father. Amen. I give it to him, and he brings me through. If it's a financial thing, amen, I say, let's just give it to God. God will make a way. Amen. God will make a way through poor people. One of the families in the church had a big challenge. It hit them. And notice I said families in the church, not somebody that don't want to serve God, that won't pay their tithes, that's rebellious, is half in and half out. I wanted to make that clear. Amen. But one of the families in the church that loves the Lord and have been faithful to the Lord, and the Lord's been faithful to them, they had a problem come up, and they had to have a big pile of money, big pile of money, in about two weeks' time. I said, I'm going to start a fund. We're going to raise that money. And I know the people thought, you ain't going to get that kind of money out of a handful of people in a little old country church in the middle of nowhere. Oh, but you don't understand the God that we're holding on to owns a cattle of a thousand hills. The God that we're holding on to, amen, can just breathe, amen, send money up in the fish's mouth. If he told me to, I'd have went to the pond back here and got some money. <laughs> but he didn't tell me to. Amen, but I know that God was going to come through. Hey, man, did you know in two weeks' time we raised over $5,000? 
over 4,000 of it come out of our church. Amen. Amen. And the treasurer knows by the little amount of money we take up here to church that that's impossible. You're right. That's about 4,000 times more than what we bring in. Amen. Or 3,000 times at least or more than we bring in. Amen. See, but there's nothing too big for God. Amen. All you've got to do is have faith. There was a friend of mine many years ago. He's getting ready to build a church. And he got ready to build his church. He, he, he ordered the material, and he said the Lord told him to build it here on this particular spot. So he, he went through this long uh, story about building in this particular spot. When they built, uh, it, it wasn't for sale. And so finally he told the person that owned it, he said, you're going to sell it to me. Well, no, I'm not. And he said, yeah, you're going to sell it to me. So something changed. I forgot what it was, and they said, if you still want that. He said, well, I told you I was going to buy it. So he bought that piece of ground. Well, they he started trying to get money raised. He come out there, and they brought this big load of lumber, and they dumped it off there on the property, and he handed him a ticket. He said, I ain't got the money to pay it. He said, I'll get it. I'm good for it. God's going to supply it. He heard the gravel popping, and he looked up, and there was a car pulled in the driveway. He, they said, how much is that bill? He sold him so many thousand dollars and said, here, make it out to who? <laughs> See, God has a way of coming through. We put our faith and our trust in God. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills. He owns the swine of a thousand <laughs> hills. He owns, uh, amen, everything. He puts everything in portion, uh, amen, where it's supposed to be in the right perspective at the right time in your life. And if God hadn't moved for you yet, just hang on. Your ship's on its way. Hallelujah. God's going to come through for you. I can tell you that over 11 years, amen, I sit right here, amen, waiting and waiting and waiting and preaching and trying to hold on and the devil coming by and discouraging me. One thing right after another, but I said I got my faith in God. God said he's going to open up doors. It's been prophesied that my ministry is going to go to the four corners of this earth. I don't know how it's going to get there, but God's going to do it. Right now, we done it. I forgot how many countries, now 165 countries or more that were going into right now. Man, we're rolling. Amen. We'll be into all of them in another year or so. Amen. God keeps opening up doors. Amen. Right here where it's impossible. It can't be done, but it's being done, and it's being done every week. Praise the Lord. I've got faith. I got discouraged here a year and a half or almost two years ago. I said, Lord, I can't get them to come to Sunday night and Wednesday night service. I get a half-decent crowd on Sunday morning, but I can't get them on Sunday night and Wednesday night. I tried everything. We even fed them back here for a while, give free supper. They's willing to stay home and eat to keep having come here Bible study. <laughs> Amen. I said, Lord, I can't get them to come. And the Lord said, why don't you go to them? I said, how? He said, live stream. Go right into their living room, right into their homes. Right now, we've done picked up to well over 300 every service. Amen. It's growing. And we, we just had this thing going here not, not long ago. We had for a couple for over about a year. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Now then we got all the stuff like it's supposed to be. God's pulled some more things in, sent us somebody here to help us. And I could go through this. I'm not going to get into all of that. He's opened everything up and lined everything up. And now then, we're on the roll. And right now then, we're multiplying. Almost multiplying every every month uh, since we've got it up and going and, and really good and strong this last time. Then it's been week after week. It just keeps rolling. The numbers just keeps rolling more and more and more. Now we got people in Romania. We got people in Greece. We got people in Kenya that watches us. That's watching me right now, not on television, but live streaming. Uh, amen. See how God has opened up the doors. Uh, I had to go 11 years or longer. Amen. In defeat and discouragement, and the Lord just kept telling me, hold on. Uh, then my ship come in. I've been blowing the horn ever since. We're here. Praise God. The Lord's come through. The doors is swung wide open. Uh, amen. Listen, God. Uh, amen. Is doing things. And now he's sending you people into the church and some of the rest of you out there watching. You don't know it yet, but you're on your way. So just go ahead and start packing your bags. Some of you's getting ready to move. Uh, amen. Here closer. And then some of the rest of you's getting ready to make this your permanent home. I won't take this opportunity to welcome you here at the shepherd's house. I don't know what you look like. <laughs> uh, 
Well, I saw you. <laughs> Praise God. I know that you're coming. Amen. I know that the number's there. See, you got to have faith. This is not about what you can see. It's about what you believe. It's about what God gives you. Well, glory. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Well, glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Woo! Hey! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, glory. Woo! Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I can do pretty good for a 57-year-old man with back trouble. Amen. Glory. And I ain't on medication either. I'm just drunk in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I wish that some of y'all uh, could get some of this. It's good. <laughs> And it gives you power. Amen. He gives you strength. Amen. To command the enemy to get back. Amen. To prophetically pronounce things that's going to come. Mm. Because God gives you visions and God opens your heart and he opens up doors that no man can open and he closes doors that no man can close. My faith and my trust is in God. When I come to church all choked up, <laughs> I said, Lord, I know I'm going to be breathing good here about 1030. Quarter to 11. By 1115, I'm going to be a wild man. I claim it in the name of Jesus. And some of y'all seen it right here. How many witnesses lately? More than one time. You heard me wheezing when I was reading Scripture. You don't hear me wheezing now, do you? Even for a fat man to run like I did, I'm not even out of breath. See, it's what the power of God can do, how he can change our lives, amen, how he can endorse, amen, what we're doing. Some says, how about endorsing this political planet? I want to endorse Jesus today. <laughs> He's the best friend I've ever had. I want to endorse the sweet Holy Ghost. If you don't have him, you need him in your life. Amen, I want to endorse the faith that I have in a God that cannot fail. I want to endorse, amen, the love I have for the Lord, amen, that keeps me going, Amen to church when I don't feel good and when people hurts me and when people lets me down I just pull that old Dodge truck right up here get out with my Bible in my arm and come in and preach and love the Lord and love people and, and you know what amen there's always been food on my table there's always been clothes on my back and I've always had a good place to sleep and my wife loves me and I love her and we'll be married 40 years it's coming May if the Lord delays his coming and we're still living and I live in and I'd still rather Heaven than have anybody else in the country. Woo! And it's because of the Lord. It's because of Jesus. Everything, amen, that I have is because of Him. I've conquered back pain. I've conquered cigarettes. I've conquered things, amen, in the name of Jesus. And I conquered being late for church. I've conquered. I've conquered a lot of things, <laughs> amen, by putting my faith and my trust in God. I better hush before I get in trouble, <laughs> amen. Would you stand with us? I'm going to say goodbye to those watching my television live stream. Pick up the telephone. If you need prayer, be glad to pray for you right now. God bless you. We're going to give an altar call for the folks here at the Shepherd's House.